Hey everybody, Chris here, and today I am going to teach you how to create complex shapes in Tinkercad using the group feature. But before we get started, I just wanted to mention, I've done another video where I use everything in this video and others to create a full project from concept to 3D print in just under 30 minutes. So after you're done here, head over to watch that video so you can see how you can combine all of these tools to create your 3D models in Tinkercad. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create complex shapes in Tinkercad using the group tool and the whole feature. So the first thing to understand when you're in Tinkercad, any shape can be one of two things. That is either a solid or a whole. And if you want to toggle between them, all you have to do is go into your properties panel and you click solid or you click whole. And that's how you can decide which it's going to be. Now the whole is something that you use to be able to cut away certain objects. So if I wanted to put this right here, and then you select both of them, then you hit group, it would cut it away. But if it's over here, and I group them together, it doesn't do anything. Now over here on your basic shapes panel, there are already two shapes that are already holes when you bring them in. So you can bring a box in as a hole or a cylinder. Now just remember, there's really no difference between the cylinder that is a solid and the cylinder that is a hole. Because all I have to do is click solid and now it's a solid. And the same thing for the other one, all I have to do is click hole. Now that we understand that, let's see how we can create a, a complex shape. So let's say that I want to make a two-sided hook. One with a square end and one with a circle end. So, first what I would do is I would create a box. Then I would scale it to the size that I want. So, if we're on our side here, I can see that I would want it about like that and then I'm going to bring it up a little more and bring it out just a bit. So for this hook, all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this all the way through it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, move it forward, and then just make it a little smaller to create that hook. Now I select both of these shapes and I turn them into a hole. Then I can select everything and group it together. So there's my square hook right there. Now I want to have a rounded end. So how I could go about that, I could grab a round roof. I can rotate this, get it to the size that I want, Then I'll bring this up and I'll use my mirror tool to mirror this. Now it's facing this way. Scale this up until it touches. But first what I want to do is I want to create a copy of this, move it over here, then I can select and drag and group it together. So now there is my round bottom of my hook. Now I'm going to use my work plane tool, click on the top of this, bring in a box, align that to the shape of my round roof, and the great thing about this part, I can actually, let me remove my work plane, and the great thing here is I can actually scale these really big because I don't need them to be perfect. Then for the top, I'm just going to move this way up. So if I go on my left side, I can click on this, 
group it together, then I can move it where I want it to be. Now, I can scale it down, and then just move it up. To where I have the right thickness I'm wanting but I want the hook to end right here so I could turn this into a hole right now then group it together then I have a nice hook right there but to cut this off what I would have to do is I can bring in a box make this go out pretty far make it a lot bigger than I actually need it go to my left side, move this up, then move it over so it's cutting it off. And I think I want it a little bit shorter, so I'm going to bring that down. Now I can select these, group them, And there we go. So I basically have created my two-ended hook that I was wanting. So using a bunch of these basic shapes and putting them together in different ways, you can create some really complex shapes with this. I could even take this even farther and make even more complex shapes if I wanted to. So what if we keep cutting away at this, and I want it more of a thin, kind of sleek looking thing? I go to my front view, I want this to come all the way up here, and then I can select it, I can align it to make it centered, then I can bring this all the way through. I can actually even move it up a little bit, then move it back down to get that right thickness I'm looking for, and it's going to cut off the bottom. And the neat thing is, is I can duplicate this same shape, mess with this width, bring it up, and keep making this interesting hook. And I can do the same thing again. To where I can make this shape, bring it up, then I can move it along. I can look at the back, bring it up just a little bit. So now this can cut all the way through here. So all I have to do is click on all of these objects while holding shift. I can group them together. Then they're all one shape. And if I click whole, now I can click on my other shape, group this together, and now I've created a wire hook. So you can see with just a few simple shapes, I've been able to create this very complex shape. So I really encourage you guys to go in and start putting some shapes together and start using your hole and grouping them together to create some really interesting complex shapes. You can see that I made this pretty quickly. Granted, this really wouldn't be that much fun to 3D print, but it is a cool shape. But you can definitely design things having your 3D printing in mind to be able to make things support free. So that's how you can create complex shapes in Tinkercad using the group feature. Now be sure to head over and watch the full project video so you can see how this tool and all of the others work together in Tinkercad. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in this video right here.